So, Vicky, you're mm -hmm. a lecturer in biology and uh -huh. you get to work with these fabulous animals mm -hmm. over here. Can you tell me a little bit about your research and how you got into this area? Well, I've always been interested in, in reproduction and nutrition and how the two interact. And after I did my zoology degree, I worked for an animal welfare organisation and we were interested in the reproductive success of Asian elephants throughout the world. So we, d we did a survey looking at how successful breeding was in these animals. So I've sort of carried that interest on through other work that I've done um, in dairy cows, for instance, um, and also in humans. So why did you choose Asian elephants? And what was the outcome of the survey? Well, even though Asian elephants are thought to be sort of semi-domesticated, they're, they're not really because they're, they're very difficult to breed in captivity and it's partly to do with their biology. They're very long-lived animals. They have the longest gestation period. For Asian elephants it's about 23 months. They've got the longest ovarian cycle at about 15 weeks and they often don't show a normal ovarian cycle which makes it very difficult um, to time mating correctly. And I've also done work with um, high-yielding dairy cows where there's a similar sort of effect in that because they're producing so much milk there's a metabolic drain on their bodies and if they can't sustain that from their body reserves for instance then they again have disrupted ovarian cycles and it's hard to get them pregnant again. Well there's a baby elephant over mm -hmm. there Vicky so it looks mm -hmm. like these elephants at Woburn Safari Park are doing really well. Yes, that's, that's Tali. She was born um, as, a, as a result of artificial insemination oh, right. using the sperm from Raja, the male elephant who's just out of sight behind the trees there. Well, you clearly know the names of all these elephants, so you must know them quite well. How did you start the, uh, the partnership and the working with Woburn and, and what's resulted from it? Okay, well, we were designing a new level two whole organism biology course right. and what we wanted students to experience was a bit of you know, being able to study animal behaviour out in the field. So we designed some, some investigations that they've got to do where they, firstly, they've got to identify the animals. So we've got a series of, of photographs of, of these different ladies. Um, and then Amy, the keeper, she did some audio interviews telling us some of the history and, and sort of measurements like the body weights and age, that sort of thing. So the students have got to extract this information and identify the animals. And once they've got that together, they can then study the video that we took of these animals. They, they, these elephants actually free range throughout the Woburn estate. Um, and we videoed them for a couple of hours just to get their natural behavior as they're browsing on grass as they are here, but also on bushes and trees and just doing what elephants do. So it's as if they're studying them in the wild and then the students are able to collect their data, analyse it and produce a little report at the end with their findings. So the Open University of course does distance learning but this project seems like it's been a really good way to give the students a kind of a genuine sort of almost hands-on real mm -hmm. fieldwork experience. Yes, and pretty much bringing the elephant into the room for them. <laughs> the elephant in the room, very good Vicky. <laughs> So do you have any plans to, to carry on working with these elephants? You know, what are your sort of ambitions for the future? Yes, we're hoping that we're going to be able to set up cameras so that we can live stream and film the animals as if working in the field and students will be able to access that through the Open Science Laboratory. That sounds great. They're fabulous, aren't they? They certainly are. <laughs>